Hello students, welcome to EPG Partshala. In today's module, we will discuss about biosensors. The contents of the module are, what are biosensors? We will discuss why biosensors have more significance as compared to conventional tools, how birth of biosensors took place, classification of biosensors such as electrochemical biosensors, optical biosensors, piezoelectric biosensors and calorimetric biosensors. Then we will discuss about various immobilization techniques used for the development of biosensors and the basic characteristics of a biosensor. First of all, we will discuss what are biosensors. Actually, biosensor is an analytical device which composes of two components. First is the biocomponent, which we also call as bioreceptor, and the second is a transducer. The function of biocomponent is to produce a physiochemical reaction in response to an analyte. Whereas the transducer converts this physiochemical signal into an electrical signal which is then converted into an electronical display. So this is the whole assembly of a biosensor. According to IUPAC 1996, a biosensor is a self-contained integrated device that is capable of providing specific quantitative or semi-quantitative analytical information using a biological recognition element which we also call bioreceptor which is in direct spatial contact with the transduction element which we call transducer. Now, we will discuss why we are talking about biosensors as we already have so many conventional tools for analysis for example atomic absorption spectrometers, ICPMS, ionic chromatography etc. But all these conventional techniques suffer from certain limitations. For example, all these instruments have huge bulky assemblies which are very expensive. Secondly, they consume more time in analysis and the techniques are laboratory bound. Also, they demand a trained expertise to control the process. And in certain cases, they need pre-treatment of the sample which again makes the process laborious. On the other hand, biosensors has advantage of low manufacturing cost, fast response time, they are portable, they provide ease of use and the most important characteristics of biosensors are their high specificity and sensitivity which could provide continuous real-time signals and the most important is that as compared to conventional tools they can provide the toxicity levels which conventional tools are unable to provide. Now, we will discuss how the birth of biosensors took place. It was in 1962 when Clark and Lyon introduced the term enzyme electrode. In this process, they used a, an enzyme electrode in which an enzyme glucose oxidase was held in close proximity with the platinum electrode in a membrane sandwich and by applying a negative potential at the platinum electrode the reductive oxidation of oxygen consumption was monitored as represented in this reaction. When the enzyme acted upon the substrate which was glucose oxygen was consumed and gluconic acid and hydrogen peroxide were produced. For the monitoring of glucose, two methods are available. Either we can monitor the consumption of oxygen or we can also monitor the production of hydrogen peroxide. Both these processes are possible at the enzyme electrode as per the following reactions. The current produced by the amperometric biosensor 
is related to the rate of reaction by the mentioned expression. Now, this is the assembly of a Clark electrode in which silver silver chloride act as the reference electrode, the platinum wire acted as the working electrode and an oxygen permeable membrane was attached at the tip of the working electrode as the biocomponent. This kind of glucose analyzer was developed as a commercial product named as 23YSI and it appeared in market in 1974. The key development in this method was the use of membrane technology which eliminated the interference of other electroactive substances like ascorbic acid which also polarizes at 0.6 volt which is the polarization potential of hydrogen peroxide. In this case, the enzyme layer was sandwiched between a cellulose acetate membrane and a nucleopore polycarbonate membrane. Now, we will discuss about the classification of biosensor or the types of biosensors. As already mentioned, biosensors composed of two components, the biocomponent and the transducer. The biocomponent comprises of any molecule of biological origin. It could be antibodies, enzymes, cells, DNAs or aptamers. In case of transducers, the basic characterization is of four types. They could be of optical nature, calorimetric, piezoelectric or electrochemical. We will discuss these transducers in details in later sessions. Coming to the types of transducers, first we will discuss about electrochemical biosensors which comprise of potentiometric biosensors and amperometric biosensors, then optical biosensors, piezoelectric biosensors and finally calorimetric biosensors. Coming first to the amperometric biosensors, as their name suggests, amperometric biosensors measures change in current. The movement of electrons in a redox reaction is detected by applying a potential between the two electrodes which are the working electrode and the reference electrode. As you can see in the image, the biocomponent is immobilized at the electrode surface which catalyze the chemical reaction and convert the substrate into product. And the product form is detected by applying a potential and the change in current is corresponding to the substrate concentration in this case. Then this is a typical electrochemical workstation which comprise of a potentiostat, an electrochemical cell with three electrodes. One is the reference electrode which is normally silver silver chloride. Second is the working electrode which could be of any conductive nature element and third is the counter electrode. The biocomponent is usually immobilized at the tip of the working electrode to carry out the chemical reaction and the products formed or the current produced in response to the product formation is monitored. Next are the potentiometric biosensors. These biosensors measure the change in voltage or ion concentration. In this case, change in distribution of charge is detected using ion selective electrodes such as ammonium ion electrode. The assembly again comprises of a ion meter, a ion selective electrode and in this case a ion strength adjuster is always needed to provide same conditions to the control and samples. Next we will talk about optical biosensors. As per the optical properties these can be divided into two types. One are colorimetric which measure the change in light absorption 
and other are photometric which depend upon the change in light intensity. In this case, the photon output for a luminescent or fluorescent process can be detected with photomultiplier tubes or photoiodide systems. Technically, optical biosensors are divided into two types. In one, fiber optic is used as the transducer and in second case, surface plasmon resonance is used as the transducer. First, we will discuss about fiber optic based biosensors. In this case, a fiber optic is used as the transducer and the biocomponent, for example, antibodies are immobilized at the surface of the fiber optic. In this case, the total reflection phenomena of light is used to produce a <clears throat> In fiber optic based biosensor, light is made to travel through a fiber optic via total internal reflection phenomena and as the light travels, it, it produces a efficient wave at the boundary of the fiber optic which provides energy for the surface fluorophores to get excited and the fluorescence emitted by the molecules at the surface is captured by the optical fiber. Next, we will discuss about working principle of SPR. SPR stands for surface plasmon resonance phenomena in which a metal plate is used as the platform for the immobilization of biocomponent. In this case, light is guided at the platform of the metal and is reflected at a certain angle. The presence of biological moieties at the surface of the platform changes the resonance angle or the intensity of reflected light which is measured as the detection signal. Next, we will discuss about piezoelectric biosensors. These are the biosensors which are based on change in mass at the sensing platform. The principle here is to measure the change in mass or the vibrating frequency of the element. When the mass increases due to the binding of the analyte, for example, the interaction of antigen and antibodies, the oscillation frequency of the device changes which represent the concentration of the analyte. The change can be measured electrically and is used to determine the additional mass which is proportional to the analyte amount. Finally, we will discuss the calorimetric biosensors. As the name suggests, they measure the change in temperature during a biochemical reaction. If the enzyme catalyzed reaction is exothermic, two thermistors may be used to measure the difference in resistance between reactant and products and hence the analyte concentration can be analyzed. Coming next to the construction of a biosensor, after discussing the biocomponent and the transducer part, the development of biosensor requires two conditions. First is the characterization of bioassay principle and second is the compatibility of the bioassay principle with the transducer. For the second requirement, the immobilization techniques play an important role in biosensor development as the immobilization of biocomponent with the transducers decides the sensitivity of the device. The immobilization techniques involved in biosensor development are basically of four types. First is physical entrapment in which the biocomponent such as antibodies, enzymes or cells are mixed with the polymer solution and the polymerized assembly is attached to the transducer platform. Second is the adsorption method. In this case, the interactions such as ionic, polar or hydrogen or hydrophobic interactions are used 
for the immobilization of bicomponent at the transducer surface. Third kind of method is the covalent bonding which are the strong, strongest kind of interaction between the functional group of the bioreceptor and the transducer and they are also the most stable method of immobilization. The last method of immobilization is the cross-linking method in which a bridge is formed between the functional groups on the outer membrane of the receptor by multifunctional reagents such as glutaraldehyde with the transducer. The cells can be bounded directly on the electrode surface or on a removable support membrane which can be placed on the transducer surface. After talking about the types and the prerequisites for the development of biosensors, now we will discuss about the basic characteristics of a biosensor. A biosensor composed of majorly four attributes. First is the linearity. Linearity is the range in which the sensor gives a positive response against the analyte and it is desirable to have a wide linear range to have high to low detection limits of the analyte. The second attribute is the sensitivity of the sensor. As the name suggests, sensitivity is the minimum value or minimum amount of the analyte which a sensor can sense. In this case, we always desire the sensitivity to be as low as possible. Then selectivity is also a major attribute of a biosensor. It is always desirable to have a sensor which has minimum interference to other analytes as compared to the major analyte. Finally, the response time. It is desirable to have minimum response time which biosensors provide as compared to the conventional analytical tools. At the end, we would like to conclude the whole session. In this session, we talked about the biosensors, their significance and their advantages over analytical techniques. We also discussed that the biocompatibility of the biocomponent with the transducer and the immobilization method used decides the sensitivity of the devices. And finally, a successful biosensor is the one which has high selectivity and sensitivity in minimum response time. Thank you.